Hello, once again Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm going to do another video today talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. But first, a word of prayer. Father, thank you for using these videos to touch lives. And I ask you to bless this message and those who hear it and use it to reach the lost. And most of all, Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, again, I have a lot of news stories I need to cover today. Uh, and because uh, of all the crazy weather we seem to have all the time, I'm able to do another video during the daytime because I've been getting so many weather-related cancellations in my job. Uh, but again, a lot of news stories to cover. Uh, Quickly, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on this probably more tomorrow, but uh, American warships being sent to uh, Yemen right now to intercept Iranian warships that are delivering weapons to the Houthi rebels. And, uh, you know, again, just another example of wars and rumors of wars, things escalating in the Middle East, and all the while the Obama administration still negotiating with Iran. And their nuclear program seems to make no sense to me, but uh, most things happening in the Middle East really generally don't seem to make a lot of sense. But one thing's for sure, it's all part of God's prophetic plan for the last days, and it is all coming together. I mean, there is actually not one aspect of Bible prophecy, end-time Bible prophecy right now, that is not taking place and, and taking shape right before our eyes. Every single aspect of it. And uh, today's, today's story's uh, just kind of more proof of that. So let's get right into it. Uh, this first news story, straight out of the book of Ezekiel 38. The war of Gog and Magog with Russia, Turkey, and, and Iran and allies attacking Israel in the final seven-year period of time. Known as Daniel's 70th week. Time of Jacob's Trouble. Very interesting headline out of the Arut Sheva today. Russia wants to redesign the Middle East. Russia thinks American policy in the Middle East has been irresponsible, but is pursuing a strategy where Iranian power would dominate. Very interesting, considering Persia, which is Iran in the Bible, and Russia will attack Israel. Uh, it says here, um, the official announcement that Putin was lifting the ban happened a few hours after Russia received a boss in Moscow. It might be just a coincidence, but at this level of decision-making, decision coincidences are rare. It is sending a message about Russia's intention in the Middle East. Basically, we often quote economic reasons, and these are valid, real reasons, but the ultimate and decisive reason is a geopolitical nature, meaning Russia wants to ultimately redesign the Middle East to its best interest, and this explains the intensification of its activities in the past weeks, whether in Turkey, Egypt, Jordan, Yemen, or Iran. For Russia, it is also about containing the spread of Sunni fundamentalism through its southern borders. The number of Chechen fighters in Iraq and Syria has been on the rise. Abbas is an interesting point in the Russian approach to the region. While Russia is clearly closer to Iran and Syria than the Turks or Saudis, they are doing more outreach to the Palestinian Authority than Hamas, the latter being more closely aligned to Iran. That is indicative of a Russian effort to have influence in every place that it can, even to the point where it sometimes has to make choices that will inversely upset one country while benefiting another. How would Putin redesign the strategic layout of the region? By running Russian interests through what it perceives as the potentially most powerful country in the Middle East, Iran. What Russia is suggesting is that it wants to redesign the Middle East around a single superpower, which is Iran, and through this, settle a number of crises, Yemen, Syria, and Iraq. 
paradoxically also the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Foreign Minister Lavrov last week made, made a clear, although for us paradox, paradoxical, linkage between Iran and the Palestinian issue. Their attitude is along the lines of having Iran as a strong power will have a stabilizing effect on the entire Middle East and ultimately on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. That's amazing. Uh, they want to be a key player and want to do it, and want to do it, and the way to do it is, is to remain Iran's first and exclusive ally. Strengthening Iran and approaching the Palestinians is part of the same vision, the same package. They are using this to be a moderator or mediator of those conflicts, thereby enhancing their leverage across the region and with the West. Russia is on the rise in the Middle East, forming greater alliances with Turkey and Iran and wanting to redesign the, the entire power structure of the Middle East and, and with Iran being the superpower of the Middle East. Gog and Magog is just around the corner based on what, the new, what is happening in the news. Uh, wow, it's just incredible. All right, so let's, let's move on to another news story about Russia and Israel. Russian interference leaves Israel no choice but to attack. It says, the Obama doctrine, scorn your friends, reward your enemies, has finally reaped the whirlwind, namely Russia and its pledge to provide Iran with an array of the most advanced defensive missiles on earth. This leaves Israel no choice except to act before those missiles are deployed. Israel must attack to remove those nukes before it's too late. If it was difficult to successfully, successfully strike Iran's nuclear facilities today, tomorrow would be near impossible, so the scientific experts tell us. It has been explained that the S-300 surface-to-air missile system would provide Iran with an impenetrable shield. If anything, Russia's move has, clearly, has clarified the situation. Israel's duty to defend itself has never been more urgent and an attack scaled to wipe out Israel's, excuse me, to wipe out Iran's nuclear emplacements would likewise be a favor to any number of Sunni states that tremble from Iran's Shiite encroachments throughout the Arab world. Jordan's King Abdullah II, got another article by him in a few minutes, told Fox News' Brett Bear that somebody better do something quick, seeing Iran on the prowl throughout the Middle East, East and beyond. You've got to connect all these dots together. All these issues are, are areas of instability, declared Abdullah, in connection with Iran's heavy print footprint throughout the region. He cited Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, Yemen, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, and his own country as being at risk. Abdullah did not directly call for help from the United States or Israel, but the hint was unmistakable. So certainly the United States under Obama cannot be counted on to come to the rescue, thus a vacuum waiting to be filled. Enter Vladimir Putin, who saw the perfect opening, an opening he's been waiting for along the decades to replace America as the dominant ruled power in the Middle East. He can't be blamed. Russia does what Russia does because it is Russia. But the United States has no excuse for being so lame. Uh... <clears throat> Putin and the Ayatollahs must be dancing at finding Obama and Kerry so easily duped. Uh, very, Israel finds itself in the same perilous spot as regards Iran. There is no choice but to take action now. And as I was reading that about Vladimir Putin and seeing the perfect opening, that reminded me of Ezekiel 38. So I turn there real quick. Ezekiel 38.4 says, And I will turn thee back. And put, put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, and horses and horsemen, all of them, clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, which is, which is Iran, Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. And by the way, Libya is also a mess right now. But um, could the hooks in the jaws simply be Obama's weakness? I never thought of that before. I've always thought it might be oil and natural gas. But it could it simply be Obama's weakness and Obama's willingness to turn against Israel and to not protect Israel? Could that be 
the hooks that that uh, God puts into Russia's jaws and brings her and her allies down to Israel. One thing's for sure, perilous times we're living in, and time is getting short because everything is forming right before our very eyes. All right. Uh, speaking of Obama and the Middle East and his viewpoint and uh, destruction he seems to be bringing on, uh, here's an article of Now the End Begins Today. Bombshell as Obama and Erdogan slated to open new mega mosque together in Maryland. Uh, <laughs> man, it's amazing what's going on. You cannot make this stuff up. Um, he will be at the opening of the $100 million mega mosque in Maryland with Erdogan, only about a half hour from our home. This is out of Now the End Begins today. Um, and Erdogan, by the way, is leader of Turkey, who was in that uh, war with Israel. They will. It's, out, it's Turkey, Russia, and Iran. Ethiopia, Libya will attack Iran. Excuse me. Jeez, we'll attack Israel in the Gog and Magog War. Sorry about that. All right. This is from his apology tour to the Middle East to his fake Arab Spring to destabilize the region, to take out secular governments and replace them with Islamic regimes. It is crystal clear. You do not have to be blind to see this. A couple of years ago, it was reported that Turkey was helping fund the building of a $100 million mega mosque in Maryland. In fact, Erdogan visited the mosque when he was here in May of 2013, promising to come back for the opening. Well, that time has apparently arrived, and now Erdogan and Obama will be together at the mosque for the big opening ceremony. The presidents of Turkey and the U.S. will open the Turkish American Culture and Civilization Center in Maryland, Turkey's foreign minister said Sunday. Uh, on a three-day visit to Washington, I can't say his name, visited the center that is also a middle-sized mosque and lunched with representatives from the American Muslim community. Uh, during a phone call, Erdogan asked President Obama to accompany him in opening the center together, and President Obama accepted his offer. Uh, says, Father, I pray for America. I pray for those who love you and your holy word. After reading this piece, I hope and pray that there will be no naysayers left. That Obama is a Christian and that he is not. That Obama is not a Christian and that he is um, infiltrating the not infiltrating the U.S. with Muslims. It is clear as it could be. Well, you know, my my initial thought when I read that is, would Obama? take place in opening a Christian church? I think we all know the answer to that. But uh, he certainly is going to help open a mega mosque in Maryland with the president of Turkey. Wow. All right. Uh, here's another article out of... Uh, uh, Prophecy News Watch. This is a very long article. Again, I just want to summarize parts of it. And uh, I will put uh, the links to all of these articles in the description box for you. Signs that the elite are feverishly pre preparing for something big. What in the world are the elite up to? In recent days, we have learned that the New York Fed is moving a lot of operations to Chicago because of concerns about a about what a natural disaster could do. The federal government is buying 62 million rounds of ammunition commonly, commonly used in AR-15 semi-automatic rifles for training purposes, and NORAD is moving back into Cheyenne Mountain because it is EMP hardened. In addition, government authorities have scheduled a whole host of unusual training exercises all over the nation. So are the elite doing all of this in order to prepare for something really big? Or should we just chalk up all this strange activity to rampant government paranoia? First, let's talk about the New York, what the New York Fed has been doing. What kind of natural disaster would be bad enough to completely shut down the operations in the New York Federal Reserve Bank? It would have to be something very unusual, and apparently the New York Fed is, is very concerned that such an event could happen. According to, to Reuters, the New York Fed has been transferring personnel to Chicago 
and building up its satellite office there just in case a natural disaster makes it impossible for normal operations to continue in New York. Last summer, I believe it was last summer, Barack Hussein Obama said his greatest fear is a nuclear bomb being detonated in Manhattan. Could we be getting set up right now? Are they getting prepared for that false flag event to happen? Gotta wonder. The New York branch of the U.S. Federal Reserve, wary that a natural disaster or other eventuality could shut down its market operations as it approaches an interest rate hike, has added staff and bulked up its satellite office in Chicago. Uh, officials believe the Chicago staffers can now handle all the market operations that are done daily out of the New York Fed, which is the U.S. Central Bank's main conduit to Wall Street. This seems very odd. Um, well, one one event that they could they think they could think of that could cause this type of disruption is an East Coast tsunami. But other than that, it's hard to imagine a natural disaster which could shut down New York for an extended period of time. Okay, then they talk about the Homeland Security buying 62 million rounds of ammo. Uh, and, now, and then more about NORAD moving underground because it's the, this mountain is EMP hardened. Uh, and then they're talking about uh, some military exercises going on in Iowa. It says, this week you may notice extra emergency vehicles and public safety officers Running around in tactical gear, hazmat suits, and bomb suits as part of a statewide drill, Des Moines is hosting Tuesday and Wednesday to prepare emergency personnel for dealing with weapons of mass destruction. And in Michigan, there's an exercise known as Northern Exposure. The National Guard event is called Northern Exposure, which is taking place across Michigan during the month of June. According to the Michigan National Guard website, Northern Exposure is a major exercise in, in Michigan where the military provides defense support to civilian authorities, uh, as well as uh, training going on similar in Arizona and California, uh, and the closing down of the Walmart stores. Uh, it says perhaps all these are just are, are all these are example uh, all these examples are just unrelated coincidences. But then again, perhaps not. One thing's for sure, it's time to wake up and pay close attention to what is going on. Uh, I've said before, I'll say again, Barack Hussein Obama, in all likelihood, is the last president of the United States. Uh, and Martial law could certainly be declared between now and the election, which is suspend the Constitution and allow him to stay on. Uh, who knows, but I'm telling you, there's some things we need to keep our eye on and we need to be awake and we need to be prepared because it's just getting crazier and crazier. Uh, atheism on the rise. Growth of disbelief signals danger for America. Again, I just want to highlight a little bit of this because there's a couple other news stories I really want to get into today. All this is just the warm-up I'm going, that I'm going through right now. Uh, that's how much is going on. Uh, atheism on the rise, growth of, growth of disbelief signals danger to America. A new study by the Barna Group has found that atheism and agnosticism are being embraced by a growing percentage of young people. According to the study, 2015 State of Atheism in America, 20 years ago, 18% of skeptics were under the age of 30. Today, the percentage is nearly double that at 34%. The numbers are disturbing, but not surprising. In the past several decades, we've seen the rise of militant secularism in America. This belief system says that if you are a Christian who believes in the authority of Scripture and in absolute morals, you are intolerant, and your beliefs are not acceptable in society. We've seen this secularism take hold in our schools, our entertainment, our culture, our politics, and even our churches. And one of the results has been a steep increase in the number of young people who reject God. Indeed, uh, according to the study, found younger generations are increasingly less likely to believe that Jesus was God. Among millennials, only 48% believe in the divinity of Jesus, while 35% believe he was simply a religious or spiritual leader, and 17% are unsure. Tragically, many churches have neglected their call to uphold biblical truth in the face of secularist aggression, instead diluting their messages in response to cultural pressures, which is exactly, by the way, 
what Pope Francis is doing, not that the Catholic doctrine is biblical anyway, but even for as far as conservative Catholic doctrine, he's been diluting that as well. That's why the world loves him. That's why non-practicing Catholics seem to love him. That's why atheists love him, because he is uh, trying to conform the church to the world. And uh, it's no wonder that the Barna study shows that more than two-thirds of skeptics have actually attended church, and many have a significant period of time. When there were our self-proclaimed ministers of the gospel who, by their own admission, do not believe in God, and others who pursue the praise of society more than obedience to God, how can the church equip individuals to stand strong in their faith? Uh, from a social standpoint, any time we reject a belief in God, and hereby a belief in absolute morals based on the Word of God, we see the disintegration of a healthy society, from the breakdown of the family and the killing of the unborn to the rejection of the rule of law and of moral boundaries, the consequences are far-reaching. Uh, great article, and unfortunately a sad state of where we are in America. Uh, Psalm 14, verse 1, says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now, God thought that that was important enough to say that he said it again in Psalm 53, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, uh, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, <clears throat> truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Second Timothy chapter 4. Verse 3 and 4 uh, says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Again, that is a great uh, example of where we are in, right now, in this, and not just in this country, but really in the world. All right, here's an interesting article about Pope Francis and a meeting with rabbis. Uh, out of Breitbart.com, in historic meeting with rabbis, Pope Francis decries rising anti-Semitism in Europe. Sounds like the right thing to do, but uh, let's just read into this. Uh, current anti-Semitic trends in Europe are cause for worry, said Pope Francis Monday morning, as are accompanying acts of hatred and violence. The Pope underscored that all Christians must be firm in deploring all forms of anti-Semitism and ensuring their solidarity with the Jewish people. He also remarked on the recent 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, the concentration camp, which has come to be synonymous with the great tragedy. Um, the, the memory of what took place there in the hearts of Europe is warning to present and future generations. Acts of hatred and violence against Christians and other and, and the faithful of other religions must be likewise condemned everywhere. Pope Francis also proposed that in the face of rampant secularism in Europe and other parts of the world, Jews and Christians have a co-responsibility to keep faith in God alive. Both Jews and Christians, he said, have the blessing, but also the responsibility to help preserve the religious sense of men and women of today and that of our society. European society, he said, is increasingly marked by secularism and threatened by atheism. And we run the risk of living as, as if God did not exist. Uh, he said, the Pope appealed for the common Judeo-Christian uh, witness to, sanct to the sanctity of God in human life. God is holy, he said, and the life he has given is holy and inviolable. Uh, Francis noted that for almost 50 years, the dialogue between the Catholic Church and the Jewish community has progressed in a systematic way, which calls for gratitude to the Lord, rejoicing in our progress and the friendship which has grown between us. He said, okay, that all sounds great. So I have to ask, why is Pope Francis not stepping up in defending the Jewish people's rights to pray on the Temple Mount? Uh, 
I, 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 I really want to know that. And uh, keep in mind that, uh, that the 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 Vatican actually owns or manages, we'll say, the religious sites in Mount Zion, the Tomb of David, and uh, other religious most of the religious sites in Jerusalem. And uh, I gotta wonder at some point is Pope Francis is he is he using some of these meetings right now to try to get the uh, the uh, acceptance of the Jewish people to get their trust? Is he going to form a covenant with them? Is he going to form a covenant with many and allow them to rebuild the temple? Daniel chapter nine verse twenty seven, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determination shall be poured upon the desolate. Very interesting, because Pope Francis has been uh, praying a lot with not with the Muslims and trying to bring Christendom together, talking and melding. Christianity and Islam together and talking about how do we worship the same God which is absolutely not the truth and the Muslims are committed to wiping out Israel and the Antichrist will get Israel's trust at the beginning of the final seven year period of time now three and a half years into it when he desecrates the temple at the abomination of desolation the Jewish people have their eyes open but unfortunately they are going to put their trust in the Antichrist at the start um, but uh, again, if Pope Francis really does uh, believe in rights for Jewish people, will he step in and intercede for the temple? Uh, well, let's go on to the next article. Uh, Jerusalem Temple Mount, Palestinian women target Jewish visitors in bid to protect Al-Aqsa. Uh, again, I'm just going to read the headline. I read a headline yesterday that an IDF soldier was arrested for bowing his head as he left the Temple Mount. Simply bowing his head. If Pope Francis means what he's saying right now in this conference with the rabbis in Europe, is he going to do something about the Temple Mount? All right, now, just right now, the warm-up is over. Now I'm getting into the major news stories for today, there are two that I really want to cover. Uh, this first one: uh, UN member states. Here, hold on, I can't read my own writing. UN member states, faith leaders set for talks in New York on tolerance and fostering peace. Again, UN member states and faith leaders. Set for talks in New York on tolerance and fostering peace. The United Nations is set to host at its New York headquarters a meeting bringing together the organization's member states with faith leaders to discuss ways to promote tolerance and reconciliation as well as to address the challenges of countering radicalization and extremism. This countering radicalization and extremism. Again, it makes everybody think, oh great, they're going to get rid of radical jihadist terrorists. But that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about anybody who has a fundamental belief, like if you're a fundamental Christian, if you believe that Jesus is the only way, you are intolerant and it is hate speech and we have to get rid of it. It's going to form the one world religion of nothing. Some politically correct... Uh, religion of nothing. So there's no exclusive rights to anything. That Jesus isn't the only way. Whatever. That's what's being formed right before our very eyes. Even Pope Francis has spoke out and said that fundamentalist Christians have a sickness. Uh, Bill O'Reilly recently said that fundamentalist Christians are dangerous. So did David Cameron in England. Uh, and again, if they want to promote tolerance... And reconciliation again. Why isn't the UN stepping up and saying no more uh, rioting on the Temple Mount? The Jew, we have to be tolerant of the Jewish right to be there as well. When are they going to be tolerant of that? And are they ever going to be tolerant of the Christian perspective? No, is they are not. And it's, again, further uh, that is further 
indication that we're living in the last days. It's further pro uh, fulfilled Bible prophecy. I didn't even cover another article today about how in the last days that they will kill you in the name of God and think they're doing God's service. And we see that happening, and that's just going to get worse. It says, President of the UN General Assembly, Sam uh, Katessa, will convene in conjunction with the Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and the High Representative of the UN Alliance of Civilizations, Al Nasser, a high-level thematic debate on promoting tolerance and reconciliation, fostering peaceful, inclusive societies, and countering violent extremism. The two-day high-level meeting will offer a platform for member states and faith leaders from around the world, along with other stakeholders, to discuss means of promoting tolerance and reconciliation, as well as to address challenges of countering radicalization and extremism. Uh, participants will have the opportunity to discuss practical strategies to foster peaceful, inclusive societies and to counter the threat of... Think this article is weird. It keeps saying the same thing over and over and over. Um, day 2 will be centered on interfaith dialogue, featuring high-level statements and on interactive panel discussion on the role of faith leaders in promoting tolerance for diversity, freedom of expression, and human rights. Although you will not be able to express... John 3.16, or John 14.6, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by him, uh, because that is hate speech. Now, religious communities have, have followers across race, class, and gender. This meeting will be a powerful demonstration of how diverse communities can address common challenges. The outcome of the meeting will be a president's summary highlighting salient points and key messages ar arising from the thematic debate. Staff members from across the UN system and representatives of the member states will be able to follow the proceedings of this exceptional high-level event online. Um, it all sounds so... These, the, 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 the New World Order elite do not miss a beat and they're very, very smart. And they are using the as I said, the, the war on terrorism, the jihadist movement, that quite frankly they help create and foster and encourage and fund to make people so worried about religious wars and tolerance and the political correctness that it's going to be used to remove, completely remove the gospel of Jesus Christ from the planet. That's what's going to happen, and the church is going to be removed, and then they, the people will get their wish. And praise God, then two witnesses will come on the scene, and 144,000 sealed servants of God out of each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And eventually an angel proclaiming the gospel, the everlasting gospel through the, through the heavens, because the church will no longer be here to proclaim the gospel. And people will have a choice at that point, not accept the mark, be beheaded, or accept the mark and be eternally damned. But praise God, we are still living in the church age, the age of grace, where you can turn to Jesus Christ in faith and be saved. And then Jesus has a promise to you in Revelation 3.10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour, time period. Temptation, I shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. But we are running out of time, as you can see from these these events. Um, and and again, I have to ask with the United Nations and their their um, color, their their conference on tolerance. What about the Jewish people in the Temple Mount? What about Pastor Abedini in Iran? Why are we why are we negotiating a uh, an Iran nuclear deal while they're still holding Pastor Abedini? And torturing him because he's a Christian. Just a, just a thought. Um, all right. One more very important, I feel, article. And uh, I've done other videos about this gentleman in the past. And lately he's been seen as a hero of the faith in the Middle East. And I'm going to bring him up again because here we go. Uh, King honors winners of the King Abdullah II Award 
for World Interfaith Harmony Week. This is a major false prophet alert. The players, I believe, are on the scene. They just have not officially taken their office yet. I believe Pope Francis to be either the Antichrist or the false prophet. I have said that I think King Abdul II could be either the Antichrist or the false prophet. I know a lot of you believe that Obama is. I still believe that Obama will be one of the ten kings. The king of the North American region, which will soon become Canada, America, and Mexico. As region number one, the Club of Rome has the rule divided into the ten nations. Seven headed beast with ten horns, ten horns, ten kings. Um, I believe that that will be Obama's reward from the New World Order Relief uh, for bringing the world to the brink of annihilation, technically, and uh, ushering in the New World Order, helping people be prepared for the New World Order. I believe that's Obama's reward. He will be one of the ten kings. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. Could he be the Antichrist? I can't say he can't. He's not. I, it's just still my feeling that he's not. I certainly believe he has a major role to play and has already been playing that role. But uh, I kind of look, and, and, and more I look at what's going on and the, and the power of Pope Francis, I keep getting lead, led more to him being the Antichrist. Um, and King Abdullah as a strong possibility for the false prophet. Here he is, he has a, an award named after him for interfaith. Uh, Relations. This, uh, this is out of Amman. His Majesty King Abdullah II on Monday handed awards to winners of the King Abdullah II Award for World Interfaith Harmony Week. In a ceremony attended by senior officials and royal family members, the World Interfaith Harmony Week was launched by His Majesty the King, who put it forward to the 56th session of the UN General Assembly, which unanimously adopted it, in October of 2010. The Royal Al-Ayabat Institute for Islamic Thought established this award in recognition of three activities or publications that best contribute to the promotion of World Interfaith Harmony Week adopted by a UN resolution. The week is annually marked in the first week of February. The winners come came from three uh, countries and they are Pakistan, Germany and Canada. The Interfaith Week, which began after the UN unanimously adopted the initiative of His Majesty, is an annual platform to raise awareness and understanding between followers of different faiths and promote dialogue and goodwill through conducting activities and events that spread this message. The idea behind Interfaith Week comes from the pioneering work of the Common Word Initiative that was launched in 2007, which called for Muslim and Christian scholars to engage in constructive dialogue based on shared values, the love of God and love of neighbor without religious prejudice, to strengthen the shared ideological religious ground, as these two messages are at the heart of all three major religions. And interestingly, the final word there in parentheses is Petra, because this is out of the Petra news agency. Many believe that the Jews three and a half years into the final seven year period of time will flee to Petra and be protected by God as he reveals to them that Jesus is the Messiah. Um, but King Abdullah being seen right now as a, as a force for peace, as a hero who's stepped up in this fight against ISIS and, this, and uh, extreme Islamic terrorism Keep in mind that King Abdullah and the Jordanian Waf are the ones who manage the Temple Mount. It's all coming together. Um, am I saying that he's the Antichrist or the False Prophet? No, but I'm because but that those people have not been revealed yet. I believe the Church has to be removed before they can be revealed. But uh, here we have a Muslim, well-respected worldwide Muslim, who's supposedly fighting the battle against terrorism and calling for interfaith harmony and peace in the Middle East and the world and already has an award for interfaith harmony named after him, King Abdullah II of Jordan. And again, they manage the Temple Mount. 
Daniel 9.27, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. For the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. He is the Antichrist. One week is the final seven year period of time. Three and a half years into it, in the middle of the week, he's going to desecrate that temple. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. Matthew twenty four fifteen, and Jesus says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. That is when the, when the Jewish people flee into Petra, which is in Jordan, into the wilderness for divine protection from God. Let's go to uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. One of my favorite chapters in the Bible. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. <clears throat> verse 3 and 4. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The Antichrist is going to sit in a temple in Israel, in Jerusalem, and declare himself to be God. Daniel 9.27 referred to it. Jesus referred to it. Matthew 24.15. Paul refers to it here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And finally Revelation chapter 11. Again there has not been a temple in Jerusalem. Since AD 70 when the Roman Empire destroyed it. Revelation 11.1. 1, and there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Again, the final three and a half year period of time before Jesus returns with the church, with all the saints, at the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, we are living in the last days. There's no question about that. And it is very important to make sure you are ready. If not, today is the day of salvation. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, have everlasting life. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 says uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus said you must be born again or you cannot see the kingdom of God. Religious ritual, being a member of a church, does not save you. A relationship with Jesus Christ, who will make you a new creature in Christ Jesus, who will wash you from the, of your sins, give you eternal life, and write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, so that you are ready for the imminent return. All the signs are here. Make sure you're ready. Keep looking up. God bless everyone.